background of how they set this up. I, we are told that uh, 60 Minutes spent about three months down in Florida trying to, to find something, uh, to find details that would support their narrative on this story. Do you know whether that's true? I, you know, I have not seen any of the background of how they develop their narrative. But, you know, this isn't a Republican issue. This isn't a Democratic issue. This is a life and health uh, of our citizens issue. And Governor DeSantis went out and, and through uncertain times of how to deal with a pandemic, he has led more seniors than any other state in the union and, and other states where death tolls have risen. Governor DeSantis attacked those that were the most vulnerable, our senior population. Over 6 million Floridians have received the vaccination. I got mine this morning. Well, and, and you're getting support in your cause against uh, this, this program from Democrats, like the Palm Beach mayor, who's a Democrat who uh, we're going to have on, Dave Kerner. We're going to have him on later in the show in the 1 o'clock hour. Uh, he is a, a life, li lifetime Democrat, and he supports the governor and says that he was misserved by that 60 Minutes report. Yeah, these were these were cheap shots. Governor did not deserve this. Uh, Publix did not deserve this. But all I know is where Governor DeSantis, uh, he's got some Teflon on his hide. He takes hits. Uh, but I know this Florida is a safer place. He has kept our people safe. He's kept our economy open. What can you tell us about the progress that you all have made in your vaccination? Now, again, one of the reasons that Publix was chosen was because you were focusing on 65 and over. That's where 80 percent of the deaths come from, from COVID, is, is in people who are 65 and over. So uh, how, how much progress have you made in that population, the, the uh, senior population getting their vaccines? So now Florida is anybody who is over the age of technically 16 can get a vaccination. So right now, Florida has, has aggressively, we made sure that the 65 and only population was targeted. But, but early on, CBS and Walgreens were the original deployed assets to deal with the vaccinations. They were having trouble getting their systems up and running. And so Publix was a test case to, to reach out to. Publix is all over the state of Florida. And you know what I appreciate about Publix? Early on, they were the first ones saying, you know, we're going to do senior shopping hours. The early parts, they only catering to seniors right. because that population was more vulnerable than anybody else. Yeah, no, I, I, I love it when stores have done that uh, since the pandemic began. I want to switch subjects a little bit because as a chief financial officer, you've probably been noticing what's happening in Georgia with this growing boycott. Uh, including the Major League Baseball, even though they're getting pushback now because they've been using bad information in order to justify their boycotts of Georgia. Are you concerned at all about whether Florida could face a similar corporate backlash? I know you, you've postponed uh, a vote on uh, new election standards for your state. Uh, what do you think the possibility of these corporations shifting their focus from Georgia to Florida? I'm a fourth generation Floridian, and it wasn't that long ago that Florida was the laughing stock of the nation because of our challenges with our own election processes. This past election cycle, we were fast, we were effective. Everyone who wanted to vote got a chance to vote. But I don't need Coca Cola or Delta Airlines getting involved in my politics. I don't need Major League Baseball getting involved in my politics. I want to be able to take my nine year old and my 10 year old and my 12 year old to a baseball game, and I want to enjoy it without getting a lesson on separations of power from corporate America. And, and frankly, you guys have been doing pretty well with, with attracting corporations because of your, uh, your tax structure and your regulatory structure, right? Well, and we're open for business. We don't have the civil unrest. We don't have the crazy lunatics leading states like a New York and California does. We make difference in the state because we care about our people. 900 people a day move to the state of Florida every single day. And they don't move here from one part of the state to the other. They move from northern states to southern states. And we welcome them with open arms. I'm just curious, has the governor of New York or the chief financial officer of Illinois ever contacted you guys and say, look, we keep raising our, our income tax rate and it doesn't help the state. How do you guys do it with zero income tax? I tell them just keep on doing what they're doing. It's, uh, you know, there's no greater <laughs> you, you like them to drive people away to you, right? 
Well, here's the deal. How would you like to pick up somebody who has lived in New York their entire life, they've created a, a sizable nest egg, and now they've taken all that disposable wealth and income and moved it to a whole other state? The whole design was to try to create a retirement system that keeps your citizens there. What a greater compliment to the state of Florida and DeSantis' leadership, but those people moving here by almost a thousand a day. All right. Well, we wish you the best. Jimmy Petronas, thank you very much for coming in. Appreciate it.